Hello. In this class, we are going to talk about introduction to Room database for Android. World before Room. First of all, a little bit about major problem with SQLite usage. There is no compile time verification of raw SQLite queries. For example, if you write a SQLite uh, query with a wrong column name that does not exist in real database, then it will be an uh, exception during the runtime and you can now not capture this issue during compilation time. So this is a very serious issue. You remember what we did with SQLite uh, queries before. Uh, it's very error-prone uh, construction in uh, Kotlin Android. Also, as you change uh, data schema, you need to update the affected SQLite queries manually. So this process can be time-consuming and error-prone as well. And finally, you need to use a lot of uh, boilerplate code to convert between SQLite queries and uh, Java, uh, Java data objects, uh, POJO objects. So you remember how uh, SQLite code looks like. So a lot of uh, boilerplate code. You see here, we have to define uh, language construction. We have to define uh, columns. We have to define queries, cursor, and everything. So this approach is not uh, popular today for Android development. Instead of SQLite, uh, Room is coming to the foreground. And it's considering right now as better approach for data persistent than SQLite database. It makes it easier to work with a SQLite database object in your app, decreasing the amount of a boilerplate code and refining SQLite queries at compile time. So what is Room? So Room is basically a database library that is part of Android Jetpack. Jetpack component libraries in Android. Uh, Room takes care of many of the chores of setting up and configuring a database and makes it possible for your application to interact with database using ordinary function calls. Under the hood, Room is, Room is kind of like abstraction layer on the top of an SQLite database. Room's terminology and query syntax for more complex queries follow the same SQLite model. So let's talk about a room database structure. There are three main components in room. It's entity, DAO, and database. So entity represents a table within the database. It should be annotated with at entity uh, structure. Uh, DAO is data access object. It contains the method used for accessing database. It should be annotated with add DAO statement. And finally, database uh, components in room contains database holder and serves as the main access point for the underlying connection to uh, our application persisted relational, relational data. The class is annotated with add database statement and should satisfy the following conditions. It has to be abstract class that be extends room database. It has to include the list of entities associated with the database within the annotation and contain an abstract method that has zero arguments and returns the class with the annotated with DAO, data access object. So this is a diagram for major components in room. Uh, you see room database that has connection with entities uh, components using get set entities fields value. Uh, data access object uh, is responsible for the get entities from DB and for uh, persistent changes back to DB, so both ways. On this way, using DAO, your Android application, communicating directly with a room database. So again, room database is nothing but just another abstract layer on the top of SQLite. So there is no nothing, there is no any changes on the low level. You still have the same database structure at the low level, the same uh, location as we just uh, studied before, data, data, slash application uh, package name, slash uh, database. 
So let's talk about entity first. So entity represents an object or concept and its properties to store in the database. Entity class defines a table and each instance of that class represents a row in the table. Each property defines a column. So you must define each entity as notated uh, at entity data class. So every entity class must have at least one primary key associated or annotated with at primary key. And fields an entity class can be annotated with at column info, uh, name equal to name of the column, annotation to give specific columns names. And you see in this example how entity is defined in, uh, in class. So usually it's a data class uh, in Kotlin. So the name user is will be name of the entity. The primary key, for example, in this case uh, is uh, int. And two uh, column information with first name and last name of the string type. DAO. So what I think of a DAO is defining a custom interface for accessing your database. Data access object or DAO provides convenience method, methods for inserting, deleting, and updating the database, basically just crude operation. When you use a room database, you query the database by defining and calling Kotlin functions in your code. These Kotlin functions map to SQLite queries. You define those mappings in a DAO using annotations and room creates the necessary code. For common database operations, there are convenience notations such as add insert, insert records to database, add delete, uh, delete records from database, and add update. For everything else, you have to use add query annotation. So this is an example for DAO uh, for the same uh, entity user that we just discussed. So what we have here, we have uh, uh, interfaces annotated with DAO. The name of the interface is user DAO. And we have one, two, three, four, five uh, separate statements uh, to define uh, ex functions ex to access database. So the first query is selecting all data from the user, which will be mapping to the Kotlin function get all that return a list of users. So that's pretty much comprehensive, right? The next query will be add query, select everything from user where ID in user ID. So basically it's uh, the, the query will be looking for the pattern uh, and return only the records that satisfy this condition. So in this case, you see the function load all by IDs will be accepting one ID parameter and return a list of users that satisfy with this parameter. So in this case, like if you see right now, that user is not unique. User ID is not unique in this case, right? Because we return array of records. The next query select everything from the uh, table where the first name like first name and last name like uh, the pattern and limit one, right? So in this case, limit one, it will be just only one user will be returned and file by name will be accepting two strings like first name and last name. Insert method and delete method pretty much straightforward. In this case, we see that we uh, provide mapping functions in Kotlin, a function insert all, uh, inserting a variable of the type user, and function delete will be deleting user by, by this uh, particular name. And finally, the component number three is database object. Uh, your room database class must be abstract and extend room database. So usually you only need one instance of a room database for the whole app. You annotate the class to be a room database with add database statement and use the annotation parameters to declare the entities that belong in the database and set the version number. Each entity corresponds to a table that will create in the database. 
So you see here we have a database annotated class with entities which has a user class as one entity. We have array, but in this case we have only one class and the version number is one. So as it was said above, we have to extend room database class or room database class and actually have a method that return a user DAO object. So you remember the user DAO object has all method uh, how to access uh, database, how to operate with entities in database. So after creating the files above, uh, you get an instance of the created database using the following code. Uh, create your DB file that will be a result of executing room database builder for the current context for the IPP database class Java with the particular database name that you have selected. The next is tutorial, simple room database project that you will be uh, doing individually today uh, from, from the scratch. So room database project uh, will model kind of like a student DB demo. And in this project, you will have a full buttons task. So one uh, button will insert data. So for simplicity, we will be inserting a random student's name and random marks between zero and 100. Select data will display all records. Uh, who failed button uh, display records for those students who received less than 50%. And basically you see result right now we have uh, records that filtered 14 records found that has less than one, uh, I'm sorry, that has le less than 50% in their marks, but their ID is preserved uh, in, the, in that order, uh, the, how they have been uh, recorded in database. So uh, in the next step, uh, we will see how to uh, proceed, what step you have to proceed to create a RoomDB project. So first of all, you have to create an empty project and modify build Gradle file on module level. So two modifications required. You have to add one more ID, Kotlin kept to the plugin section as shown below. And in the same file, you have to add the dependencies section inside. You have to add room database version, a couple of uh, annotations and implementations. Optional, you have to add Kotlin extension and coroutine support for Room if you'll be using in the future. And we need in this case uh, for introduction version, we need Anka commons, uh, org JetBrains Anka library uh, for using uh, asynchronous threads, asynchronous modules in our database. Uh, second step, represent UI according to the template. So we'll start with just two buttons, uh, insert data and select data. The rest of the button will be do it, you will be doing individually. So let's get started with uh, student entity Kotlin. So according to the template, we will create entity table name students. And data class student entity will be saved in student entity Kotlin with the following. So we have a primary key after generated key uh, of long time, uh, variable ID. We have a column information with name, uh, which associated with a Kotlin variable full name string. And finally, we have result for the uh, particular students, uh, represent particular students mark as integer, variable result type integer. And column name will be result. Second file will be a DAO file in student DAO Kotlin according to the template. So we have here a content of this uh, of this interface. It's annotated with DAO. Interface student DAO has two queries. So one query select all, all records from students uh, database. It map into Kotlin function uh, get all and return a list of students entities. And insert method basically inserting database, uh, record to the database with flag on conflict on conflict strategy replace. If any conflict with database exists, uh, the insert um, statement replace the current conflicting record. 
And finally, third uh, student uh, with one parameter with student entity will be uh, mapping Kotlin function. And finally, the student database Kotlin file that uh, combine everything together in, a, in a one database entity. So um, at database annotated file will describe that it using uh, student entities as a class. Uh, so it extends room database and has a method that uh, returns student DAO as an abstract fun student DAO uh, method. Uh, also, it has a companion object that uh, describes uh, initial components student instance, data, student instance database. And then a function get instant function will be ob obtaining the student's database method. And return instance and student database will be result of uh, calling a room data builder class. Student DB is the name of the file that we just uh, selected for uh, to name the file in our database. So the next you see main main activity that main activity actually how we operating uh, operating of the project. So this uh, file uh, will will be in three pages. So basically, I'm not going to discuss all these three pages because uh, uh, I will provide you the uh, content of this file. You'll be able to go and learn this file by yourself. Uh, just only telling you that this file consists of two buttons, uh, listener, one button we process insert button, uh, inserting database, record to database. And the next button will be a select button click listener that this button display will be responsible, responsible to display data from database. So a little bit about insertion. So we uh, initialize a new student with some random data and we do a synchronous task. We uh, do this task in the background using do a sync block and put the students in database uh, using UI thread, we will be make changes to UI. So what is the most important um, decision to use uh, asynchronous uh, processes here? So the question is the accessing database could be very uh, slow and it can freeze UI. And uh, in order to make changes to UI, you also need a separate UI thread to make sure that your uh, changes will not cause any problem for application itself in general. Uh, the same happened in uh, when you pr process button click for selection. You see here we are uh, calling uh, set, set to click listener. We do asynchronous task, do things in the background. Uh, we get the student list from database, uh, calling student DAO get all. And we make any changes to the UI thread, right? We need to display the students in the text view is great. So for students in list, we uh, create my text field that will be appending student ID, student full name, and student result. Student ID is actually it's a key from database. Okay, so when you run this project, uh, now it's time to test buttons, insert data and select data. And when you run this project, you will get uh, insertion uh, that will be provided by Toast. And you'll get selection when uh, they'll provide the whole uh, list of items uh, from the database. So for your individual uh, modifications uh, for the room DB project, your turn, you will add the buttons who failed and delete, delete all. Uh, who failed button is shown. It will be show the students who failed the course, which is between uh, 0 and 50 and 49. And delete all will be uh, the button that delete all records from database. OK, so we're done with this. Uh, with this class, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I will be still here for the next uh, couple of hours. Thanks a lot.